Are you ready to take a magical trip to Squirrel Village for Christmas? I know I am. And the squirrels are all very excited about your arrival. Elvis has been singing Christmas songs for months, just in preparation, just for you, much to the annoyance of the other squirrels. Now, close your eyes and we'll begin. Take a big deep breath in through your nose. Feel your tummy expanding. And breathe out through your mouth. Again, deep breath in through your nose. Feeling your tummy expanding like a balloon. And breathe out. One last time. Big deep breath in and gently breathe out through your mouth. That's great. Now imagine a bubble of glowing light as white as the snow surrounding your whole body. And this light is so bright, it's like a mini sun. But it doesn't hurt to look at it though. It's so gentle and soothing. And this light is a force field of protection. It will only allow love and positivity to enter whilst you are on your adventures in this squirrel village. Imagine yourself in an enchanted forest. And this forest looks very similar to the one that led you to squirrel village. That's because it is. You hear the bird song above you and see the forest wildlife all around you. It's so vibrant here, and it's such a magical forest. You walk further into the forest and hear the sounds of running water. It is the beautiful clear stream gurgling and splashing over the rocks and the pebbles. You remember it now? Of course you do. Then, You hear a voice behind you shouting your name gleefully. Over here, over here. It's Red, the bravest squirrel of all. And he's accompanied by his friends, Bushy, Cyril, Penelope, and of course, Elvis. They all race towards you at breakneck speed, climbing up your body and giving your face huge kisses and cuddles. What a welcome. Red tells you, that they are so excited to see you again and they've prepared Christmas in the village for your arrival. They even have a place at the dinner table for you with your own, your very own Christmas cracker and it has your name on it. First though, you need to shrink down in size to be able to access the squirrel village again. Do you remember? Red hands over a magical, shiny brown nut to you. And you know what to do. So you pop it in your mouth, you chew it, and then you swallow. And in the blink of an eye, you are face to face with the squirrels again. Oh, it's good to be back. You head towards the squirrel's large oak tree and notice that it's kitted out in tinsel and different coloured festive lights wrapped around it and it looks so magical, so beautiful. You approach the door, well, elevator really, to the tree and notice a banner on it which says your name and welcome back is written on it too. Oh, you feel so loved here. That's because you are. You enter the tree and into the elevator and you immediately notice how warm and cosy it is inside. It's quite wintry and cold out there, but not inside the tree. It's just perfect. Red presses the button to the sixth floor, which takes you to the cafes and the entertainment area. You feel so very excited. Red informs you that there is going to be a party later and you are more than welcome to join them. Oh yes, you love a good party. 
Elvis then bursts into song out of nowhere and bellows it out of full gusto. Last Christmas I gave you my heart. But he's not a very good singer though. You all look at each other and chuckle. It's so good to be back with these guys again. The lift stops, the doors open, and you are welcomed by a majestic Christmas scene. All the shops, cafes and entertainment area look so beautiful. And they're decorated in shimmering colours. And the snow is gently falling on the ground. Which you think it can't be real, really, can it? You're inside a tree. Red leads you to the cafe, the one you went to last time. And it's a good time to catch up with all the other squirrels so you can share what you've been up to. So, spend a few minutes chatting in the cafe with your squirrel friends. Order anything you like off the menu. But I must say, the chocolate ice cream is particularly delicious. Did you enjoy your cafe natter with the squirrels? It's always good to catch up, isn't it? Bushy nudges Red and tells him that you best make a move now as Christmas dinner won't be long. Red's parents are making Christmas dinner for everyone this year and you are, of course, invited. You get back to the elevator and Red tells you to press the button for the fifth floor. That's where all the squirrel houses are located. Do you remember? You press the button, and once again, Elvis bellows out his song. I'm dreaming of a white Christmas. And you all burst out in laughter. The elevator door opens, and again you are greeted by an incredible sight. There is snow on all the roofs of all the quirky little houses, and it does certainly look real. But still, it's inside a tree. Wow. There are little squirrel snowmen in the squirrel gardens. Child squirrels are having fun riding around on sleighs and you even notice a squirrel snowball fight going ahead in the distance and it looks ever such fun. There is such a huge array of colour of light and of laughter all around you and you just love it here. Red enters the door of his home and he tells you all to come in. 
Mama Red gives you a big hug and says she's heard all about you and it is a big squishy hug. Then Papa Red shakes your hand and tells you it is an honour to have you round for Christmas dinner. And you shake your hand a little bit because that got squashed too. They're very strong, these squirrels. It's lovely and cosy in Red's house. And it's like a little cottage with a roaring fireplace and decorations all around it. There is a tree in the corner with little nut baubles all hung upon it and an angel proudly perched on the top and she's very beautiful. Mama Red tells everyone to sit down at the table as she dishes out the food. You then hear a loud thud at the door. What on earth is that, you think? Oh, it's Hopping Robin, says Penelope. He did say he would be attending this year. Now, Hopping Robin is quite a unique looking Robin. He had a fall many years ago and he hurt his wing so he's now unable to fly, which is quite sad for a Robin. He has crutches to help him walk and he also wears an eye patch. He originally needed the patch after his fall as he hurt his eye, but his eye's fine now. He just likes to wear it as he thinks he looks like a pirate. And he does a bit. Ahoy, shipmates! Shouts Hoppin, followed by Little Twirl, which he thinks is quite impressive, considering he's on crutches. Everyone greets Hoppin with a hug. He sees you and he asks you your name. So you tell him. He holds out his fist. And you wonder what he's doing. He wants a fist bump says Bushy. So you proceed to give him a fist bump and you chuckle all by yourself and try not to let him see. You all sit down at the table and Mama Red starts to dish out the Christmas dinner. It looks delicious and the smell of the gravy, mmm, yum, yum. She also tells you she has something special for dessert too and crackers to pull so get stuck into your dinner chat with the squirrels and just enjoy yourself for a little while longer Well, what an incredible Christmas dinner that was. You are absolutely stuffed to the brim. What did you have? What was the dessert? Did 
you win anything in your cracker? Well, did you? Hoppin' Robin says it's almost time for the party to begin in the village square. So you all thank Mama Red for dinner and get up and make your way over to the square. You can hear disco music. And there are other squirrels dancing in the square. You have never seen anything like this. And Hoppin' Robin hobbles up on the stage, puts a pair of headphones on and takes over DJ duties for the evening. Oh my! It is quite a sight to see him bobbing his head to the music and the first song he puts on is Rockin' Robin, which apparently is his favourite. Now this is your time to relax and have some fun at Squirrel Village Christmas Party. Feel free to do and go wherever you wish in the village. Spend some time dancing and playing with the other squirrels. Maybe even have a snowball fight or build a squirrel snowman together. Maybe you can even help Hop and Robin with his DJ duties. It's up to you. So spend a few moments enjoying your time at the party. Go on, have some fun. Wow, what an incredible party that was. What an amazing day you've had. What did you do? Where did you go? You're feeling a little tired now. And Red says they are having a sleepover at his parents' house. And you are more than welcome to join them. Of course, you would be delighted. Red leads you into his bedroom, where there are lots of sleeping bags. One for each of you. 
It is so cosy and warm in here, so homely. It makes you feel so relaxed and at peace with your squiddle friends and, of course, Hoppin' Robin. Just as you're about to enter dreamland, you hear... It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. It's Elvis, of course. And you all chuckle and tell him to shush, because you want to go to sleep now. Your eyelids feel so heavy now, and you feel so very sleepy, but so very relaxed at the same time, and very peaceful and very calm. So just allow yourself to gently fall asleep, feeling so content, so safe, so loved, and so very very protected and when you wake up in the morning you are back in your very own bed feeling refreshed filled with positivity and excited for your next trip to Squirrel Village and there will be another one this has been the best Christmas ever sweet dreams night night now today I'm going to tell you a story a story about a young reindeer who became the leader of all the reindeer who pulled Santa's sleigh it was two days until Christmas Eve and Santa was going through his list of toys for all of the children everywhere it was snowing But it was beautiful. Everywhere was white. So clean, so bright. Now Santa called out to Rudolph, but he got no answer. He wondered where he was. So he called him again, and then he remembered. Rudolph was packing his case because he was retiring from pulling the sleigh. Because Rudolph had done this for many, many years. Santa was going to be very sad to see him go, but he knew that Rudolph deserved to be in a warm sunshine, having lazy days ahead. So Santa, being the kind man that he was, bought him a ticket to travel to a tropical island where he could do whatever he wanted to do from now on. No more pulling a heavy sleigh, No more keeping the other reindeer in line. Just sun, sea and sandy days ahead. Santa had even bought Rudolph some new sunglasses and sun cream for his shiny nose so it wouldn't get sunburnt. But Santa still knew he needed to find someone. Someone new to take over from Rudolph. So he decided to run a talent show to find that special new reindeer, the one who would be Rudolph's successor. The talent show is called The North Pole's Got Talent. Wow. Santa was absolutely thrilled with this idea because it was Mrs. Claus who thought of it. The show's panel would consist of Mrs. Claus, of course, Head Elf, Bernard Evergreen, and Rudolph himself. But the final say would always be with Santa himself. And the show was to begin in an hour's time. Santa was very excited. Unsure, but very excited. The show was finally starting and the judges were in place. And one by one, the other reindeer took their place on the stage. The stage was brightly lit with lots of colourful Christmas lights and lots of lovely twinkling gold dust floating gently through the air. Oh, it was such a beautiful sight. After seeing the seventh reindeer do a song and a dance very badly, I might add, because this reindeer, who was called Jack, really couldn't sing in tune. 
Neither could he dance because he really did have two left feet, which made it very hard for him to walk straight, let alone dance. Santa sighed. They only had one more reindeer to see, and he wasn't holding out much hope because, unfortunately, as wonderful as they were, none of them were really up to the job, and it was a hard job. Santa was just hoping that this last one would be the one. The final reindeer entered the stage and began to tap dance and at the same time was playing the bagpipes. Oh dear, what a racket the bagpipes made. Santa had to put his fingers in his ears to try and drown out the sound, but unfortunately it didn't work. When the reindeer finished his dancing and bagpipe playing, they all clapped. After all, he did try his very, very best. Santa sighed again. He spoke with the panel of judges and said, What are we to do? We only have today and tomorrow to find a replacement for Rudolph. What are we to do? The competition was now over, but they had still not found anyone. Santa stepped up on the stage and he asked if there was anyone else who would like to come up and try. He really, really hoped there would be. It was then that another young reindeer held up a hand and said, My friend can sing. She has a very beautiful voice and she is very strong. She can pull your sleigh for you. Santa said, Well, why not? We have no one else. Now the young reindeer looked very shocked. She's only seven years old. She's very quiet and very shy. And she has had a bit of a hard life because she lived in the reindeer orphanage along with her friend who'd put her hand up. They didn't have any parents and not very many friends because they were both shy. So sometimes they got a bit lonely, but they did have each other. Her name was Angel. And she is like an angel too. She is very serene and very loving. She is very beautiful, but she doesn't think that she is. And she has no idea how wonderful her singing voice is. It's a voice that makes everyone feel happy and want to sing along too. It's her special skill, even though she doesn't know it. It's a voice that brings peace to everyone that hears it. So slowly, she climbs up the steps and onto the stage. And she stands next to Santa and smiles shyly at him, looking as if she was about to run away. Santa tells her it's okay, and she just sings a song. Santa leaves the stage, and Angel is left on her own. She is very nervous, and she's trembling a little bit. She moves up to the microphone, and looks out into the audience. And all she can see is many faces just looking back at her, waiting for her to sing. Slowly, she begins to sing, but her voice is a bit quivery at first because she's so scared. But she looks at Santa's face and into his very kind eyes, and he gives her the confidence because she knows He is willing her to do her best. As she sings, Angel's voice becomes stronger and louder. And the sweet melodies become so very clear. And everyone begins to listen intently. As she sings, all the reindeer become silent. And she can see in their eyes how much they love her voice. It makes them feel so safe. It makes them feel so very loved. It makes them feel so very happy. So happy, in fact, that they begin to sing with her. And she is overjoyed by this. When Angel finishes her song, the crowd of reindeer 
let out a roar of approval. They love what she sings. They love her. Angel is so moved by this. Tears spring into her eyes. But she is so very, very happy. Santa comes back onto the stage and gives her a great big hug. The kind of hug that only Santa can give. He announces that Angel is the winner of the competition and Angel will take over from Rudolph and lead the other reindeer on Christmas Eve. The following day, it is Christmas Eve and the reindeer are all ready to go, all ready to pull a sleigh for Santa. Santa does his final check and then he calls out all of their names. Now Dasher, now Dancer, now Prancer, now Vixen. On Comet, on Cupid, on Donna, on Blitzen. The name he saves to last is Angel. And Santa says, Come on, Angel, show me what you can do. She gives him a big grin and begins to move forward, followed by the other reindeer. As she builds up speed, she and they begin to rise up into the clear night sky and the moon shines brightly and lights their way. Rudolph, who is down below with his suitcase and his ticket to a tropical island, is so very, very proud of her. He's so proud to have her as his successor and he smiles happily. He waves goodbye to them all and then goes off to the sun for a well-earned rest. But you, though, you feel very peaceful now, tucked up in your own bed. And now it's time for you to sleep. And you feel so very relaxed, ever so happy. You just want to go to sleep and dream of your happy Christmas. And if you listen really hard, maybe, just maybe, you can hear the tinkle of the sleigh bells. You might look out the window, you might see Angel for yourself. But for now, good night, sleep tight. We wish you a very happy Christmas and a fabulous new year. All our love, Leslie and Tony at New Horizon. Once upon a time, in a cosy village nestled amongst snow-covered hills, in a land far, far away, there lived a jolly old man named Santa Claus. And he lived in a wonderful old snow-covered cottage. And he would sit in his big comfy chair, toasting his toes in front of a roaring fire with a cup of hot chocolate in one hand and read his list of all the children he would deliver presents to on Christmas Eve in his other hand. Now Santa had a heart as warm as a crackling fireplace and a smile that could light up the darkest night. And He was the kindest person anyone could ever wish to meet. And he lived with a beautiful herd of reindeer. They had their own very comfy stables where they lived too. And it was nice and warm and cosy for them. They were also very magical too, just like Santa. The reindeer were the ones who helped him on his magical journeys. And every year as Christmas approached, Santa and his reindeer prepared for this special mission of spreading kindness and happiness to children all around the world. The reindeer would have to do their daily exercises and keep fit routines because they knew they had a very long, very hard journey to do with Santa. Santa also had to do his keep fit too. He would stand in the snow, jumping up and down and waving his arms about madly, getting himself fit. And sometimes the reindeer would have a little giggle watching him because he did look ever so funny bouncing up and down. Now Santa 
knew the names of every child in the whole wide world. He even knew what they looked like too. As each day passed, the reindeer, with their powerful hooves and magnificent antlers, eagerly waited for Santa's command. For they were getting itchy feet, or hooves in their case, to be on their way, flying through the sky, soaring as high as the stars. But they waited until Santa was ready, and of course, they had to wait for Christmas Eve too. The time had finally arrived, and it was Christmas Eve, and it was a very chilly winter's night, and the snow was falling softly too. So Santa harnessed his reindeer to his magical sleigh, filled to the brim with beautifully wrapped presents. The reindeer, each with a name as unique as their personalities, eagerly awaited Santa's signal to take flight. With a twinkle in his eye, Santa called out, On Dasher, on Dancer, on Prancer and Vixen, on Comet, on Cupid, on Donna and Blitzen. And of course, let's not forget our special guide, Rudolph, with his shiny nose. The reindeer galloped through the night sky, the hooves gently touching the fluffy clouds. And Santa's sleigh soared from house to house, landing on rooftops with a soft thud. Santa, with his sack of presents, would slide down chimneys, leaving gifts behind. Gifts, joy and peace. In every home, Santa's presence filled the air with kindness and happiness. As the night went on, the snow started to fall harder and the wind began to pick up. And they were all getting tired and the sleigh was getting heavier with each stop they made. But they couldn't stop now. They had to deliver all of the presents to all of the children before sunrise. Finally, As the sun started to peek over the horizon, Santa and his reindeer made their final stop and delivered the last few presents. They were exhausted, but they felt so happy and so fulfilled knowing that they had made so many children happy. And the children would wake up to find their Christmas wishes granted their faces glowing with excitement and gratitude. The reindeer, with their antlers adorned with jingling bells, watched with joy as the children's laughter echoed through the night. But Santa knew that Christmas was about more than just presents. It was a time to spread love and kindness to all. So alongside the gifts, he left notes encouraging the children to perform acts of kindness and to share their happiness with others. You see, he believed that a small act of kindness could light up a heart just like his sleigh lit up the night sky. After a long night of delivering presents, Santa and his reindeer began their journey back to their cosy village. And as they flew back to the North Pole, the snow started to slow down and the stars started to fade away. But the memories of the happy, smiling children, the glittering stars, the lots and lots of presents, the gratefulness and the snow and the snowflakes would stay with Santa and his reindeer forever. They reached their wonderful home in the mountains, surrounded with snow, and gathered around a warm fire, enjoying hot cocoa and laughter. Santa thanked his loyal reindeer for the hard work and their friendship, knowing that they were the true magic that made Christmas possible. As the village slept, Santa and his reindeer rested, their hearts filled with joy. They knew that their mission of spreading kindness and happiness had been accomplished and as the snowflakes gently fell outside Santa whispered to his reindeer every day 
can be like Christmas Day if we carry kindness in our hearts. And so, the legend of Santa Claus and his reindeer continued, reminding us all that the true magic of Christmas lies not only in the presents we receive, but in the kindness we share with others. But you know, you feel very peaceful, tucked up in your own bed. And it's time for you to sleep too, when you feel so very relaxed. Yet you just want to go to sleep and dream of your happy Christmas. And if you listen really hard, maybe you can hear the sound and the tinkle of the sleigh bells. Good night and sleep tight. We wish you a very happy Christmas and a fabulous new year. Lots of love from Leslie and Tony at New Horizon. Now imagine yourself walking through a wintry land of ice. It does look very cold, but bizarrely, you feel perfectly warm and you are wrapped up all snug as a bug. And you feel so safe here, so peaceful, so relaxed. Now ahead of you, you notice what looks like a cart on an ice track that leads as far as the eye can see. It must be an ice cart. And it actually looks like a roller coaster on ice, really. And you notice there's a sign next to it which says, Welcome aboard the Ice Express. Hop in. Next up, Ice Kingdom. Wow. Ice Kingdom sounds really cool. And you do really fancy a go in that ice cart. So, you hop in as instructed and make yourself all nice and comfy. You put on your seatbelt and notice then that there are different buttons which take you to all different locations. Ooh, how exciting. You take hold of the steering wheel and push the button for the Ice Kingdom and off you go whoosh! Wow! This is so fast! The cool air on your face is exhilarating. And you go up, you go down, you swoop to the left, you swoop to the right and even do a loop-de-loop -loop before finally arriving at your destination. Wow! What an amazing ride! You really do like the Ice Express. You get out of your cart and take a look around. This place is impressive. It's like an ice metropolis with all kinds of things going on all around you. There are vehicles you've never seen before. Ice skyscrapers, wow. And it's all mixed in with little villages scattered all around. It really is quite something. You seem to be in the hub of the Ice Express with hundreds of tracks going to all different destinations. And you notice one that goes to space. You notice another one that goes to Unicornia, the land of the unicorns, and another to Waterworld, and you've been there before. Wherever you want to go, there is an ice track to take you there. Oh, wow, this is so cool. It's then that you notice a short little figure in a hat approaching you and he introduces himself. He says he's been waiting for you to arrive. He is an elf and his name is Nick. He knows your name already. He actually has a piece of paper in his hand with your full name on it too. Wow. He says he will be your guide whilst you're in the Ice Kingdom and he seems to be a wonderful companion. And he looks just like you would imagine an elf to look like, wearing all the paraphernalia and the pointy hat and he has that cheeky grin on his face. Nip tells you the elves here have a special power. They can create ice structures using only their mind. 
He advises. He can just imagine something. Point his finger in the location. And there is an ice blast and the structure just appears. It gives you a demonstration of his skills. Like creating an ice apple out of thin air. He hands it to you. Wow! You taste it and it actually tastes like a real apple. But even sweeter, fresher and more delicious. Nip tells you he'll show you how to do it too. Oh wow. You just love this place and you just love Nip. He is so cool. You notice a nice wishing well ahead of you. Nip says, If you throw an ice coin in, you can make a wish. So he hands you an ice coin and you toss it into the well. But... Have a think about what you want to wish for. Make it something really special. Chuck it in now. What did you wish for? Oh, no, don't tell me. Maybe you should just keep it to yourself. Keep it a secret. It's then that you hear a bit of a racket from above. It sounds like singing. Badly singing. You look up, and to your surprise, it's a flying reindeer. And the reindeer appears to be carrying two penguins as passengers. They are all singing their hearts out before making a crash landing and chuckling together as they hit the ground and they bounce just a little bit. Epitaph, there you are, says Nip. Nip informs you Epitor is a flying reindeer, and they are a team. Epitor takes Nip all around the Ice Kingdom, and they share a home together in a nearby village. The two penguins are friends from another village, brother and sister actually, and they are a funny pair. Kai, the boy penguin, is wearing Spider-Man pyjamas and a Santa hat, while Sophia is wearing sunglasses a lovely big bright Christmas jumper and she has the most amazing curly hair so thick and wonderful which she wears in pigtails really bouncy pigtails and you've never seen a penguin with pigtails before but this one is so cute the penguins give you a high five and say please to meet you yes they talk to and they really are very cute. Nip asks you if you would like to play around the Ice Kingdom for a while with them. You say, well, of course you do. So you all hop on the back of Hepitor, who is one giant reindeer, by the way, and off you go. You rise off the ground and see the kingdom in all its glory. And it's so magical here. You notice some polar bears playing a game that they call Stack the Polar Bear. Apparently, this is where two teams of polar bears stand on each other's shoulders and whoever stacks the most wins. Hmm, could get a bit wobbly, couldn't it, really? There are five stood on top of each other on one of the teams. Ooh, it definitely looks a bit wobbly to me. Hmm. You also notice elf children playing hide and seek using this special ice magic to create their hiding places. Oh, these are very clever elf children. But now, just spend a few minutes with Nip, Epitor, Sophia and Kai exploring the magical ice kingdom. See what you can see in this beautiful metropolis. Maybe you can visit some of the shops and see what they sell. Or maybe you can join in some of the games with the polar bears and the elves. Don't really want a polar bear standing on my shoulders though. A bit too big I think. Maybe your new friends will even introduce you to their family. Maybe Nip will show you some of that ice magic he has. Go on. Enjoy yourselves with them. And watch 
the hit and miss. Wow, what an adventure that was. Did you enjoy your time with your new friends? I bet you did. Nick tells you they have had an amazing time with you today and would like to do it more often. And before leaving, they would like to take you on the Ice Express and let you choose the destination of wherever you would like to go. Oh, and you say you would love to. So you all climb into one of the larger ice cards and you decide where you would like to go. Hmm. Maybe the ice track to space. Maybe you'd like to visit Jurassic World. Or maybe you'd like to go back to Unicornia or underwater world. You can go anywhere that you can think of. You can just go. So have a little think. Press the button and head off on an adventure with your new friends. So for a few minutes, I'll just leave you to go off. Off you go on an adventure of a lifetime.
what a fantastic day you have had. Although you are feeling a little tired now. You love the Ice Kingdom so much and the Ice Express and you can't wait to come back again. Nip says you are welcome anytime and all the others nod in agreement excitedly. Oh, you have made friends forever. How wonderful is that? But you are feeling a little tired now and Nip advises you to hop in the ice cart one more time and press the home button and it will take you straight back to your own warm and cosy bed. So you wave goodbye to Nip and the penguins and the penguins are blowing kisses to you. Oh, you're going to miss this place so much. You're going to miss all of them too. But your eyelids feel so heavy now. You feel so sleepy, but very relaxed, and very peaceful, and very calm. So just allow yourself to just gently fall asleep, feeling so content. And always remember, you are safe, you are loved and you are protected always and when you wake up in the morning you'll feel refreshed filled with positivity and excited for your next trip to the ice kingdom but for now sweet dreams night night